Makes sense, and let's see if they make another draft here. That makes a lot of sense, Trevor. Well, let's talk about these bans. We saw Fnatic detouring from the standard, let's say, by banning out three supports. Today, it's no surprise to see Draven targeted to the Wolves. It's actually their most banned champion, five out of the seven games. And Siva from Hyonan, it's what he got the, was it 17 KDA last week? And it's weird when you allow yourself to get counterbanned, you know, when usually you have these one-trick ponies or these, these oddball champions, usually it's very hard to ban them out because you have to ban so many meta things already. Because it, Copenhagen Wolves are not drawing enough meta bans on their own. H2K can comfortably just target the one man that has all the pressure on his shoulders. Freeze, immediate Draven ban, immediate Callista ban. Copenhagen Wolves initiated the Sivir ban, which is really good against H2K. It really brings their style together, so I like it. And then all the rest goes to the other threat on the team. Uh, Odo Wamane getting his Fizz and his Rumble banned out. I even see an early Maokai pick up for the Wolves here, because that seems to be one of the few champions Youngbuck is very comfortable on. Both Jungle is still up, so we can see a swap there. And H2K is saying, okay, Soren, you're most comfortable on us here. We're just going to take that away. We have two bans on Freeze here. Let's see how this plays out. We'll find out. What do Copenhagen Wolves prioritize? This is, of course, one of the big threats. You know, we touched on the whole Soez and Huni uh, comparison earlier, how teams ban Huni, they target ban Huni every game. Oh, we forgot about Ryze. I do this all the time. Threat. They've target banned Freeze. We'll see what he gets his hand on. Ryze is locked in. Yeah, I sh probably should have remembered that. Minus one for you, Krepo. Alistair is open. Too. It's likely we see that I'm dropped in the first I'm trying to run through the list now. Like, what yeah. have we forgotten? Don't forget about the OPs. <laughs> I remember the Alistair. Could be a solid pickup, however, so Singh has proven to play other champions too. Definitely do that. It would also be his first Alistair of summer. Played Annie, Janet, Morgana, and Thresh. H2K traditionally goes Rek'Sai here because they seem to favor it over Gragas when they have the, you know, the choice to pick any tier ones. Usually Ryu would lock an early LeBlanc here too, which he got nerfed. But they must have left Rise open with a plan. Either maybe Cho'Gath coming out later or they have a different plan to shut him down. That's well, Chogath worked for Fnatic for H2K. Three games on that rec side for Lulex. He will be locking it once more. He's got an 18 KDA on that champion. Extremely effective. And Kasing is going to stick to Thresh. So Alistair is up if Unlimited would like to go that route. But why would you leave both Ryze and. Like, why wouldn't you just leave Ryze and Kalista open? Because now you're giving away Ryze. You're not picking Alistair yourself. So you're giving Alistair to Unlimited Raider. You can pick it up on this rotation as well if he wants. Just giving up a lot of power picks here. Tier 1 jungler too. So Copenhagen Wolves have the makings of a potentially good draft. They just have to be wary of the counter pick. H2K with probably should have an answer for this rise. They should have a plan. Whether it's a lane swap and shut him down that way and just camp the hell out of him. Or maybe Echo. Echo Rex I top lane. I, I know, definitely try and shut him down. I definitely think we have to step back. I mean, Airwax said last week that if Echo was free, he'd pick it instantly every game. Yeah, but we'll see whether or not Dentist gives him permission to. <laughs> We've also heard that uh, players have gone on their own little rampages for, for, for champion picks in the last two weeks. Ooh, new Jace. Come off a little bit Echo, yeah? So Echo, Echo over Jace. Gragas. Potential steal here, though. Because maybe they're afraid of uh, if Oduamna has been practicing Echo top lane. I also, sure. I really just want to highlight, I'm not seeing a whole lot of natural synergy here. Ryze wants to be up front, Jace wants to poke. They Echo still have needs a lot of setup, so we'll see if they can get that from their AD carry and support. Yeah, but they can still mend it all together, you know. They, they're they're going to get the Alistar, and Alistar puts together pretty much any team comp, uh, if they so choose to. Morgana's still open, too, if they want the Black Shield, but... Uh, Pokey mid laner right now. And then you have the Echo to go in with Disruption. I still feel... Kragas would have been a better pick with these two picks because you have more Krepo, feel, more disengage. I have to highlight, unless Oda Wombly runs that Kragas top lane like Cabochard has, this will be the first game in the summer split that Kragas does not get picked or banned in four weeks of gameplay. Not looking likely at this stage in the matchup is that Jinx and Gnar will be the final lock in. So Hyanin is going to have a lot of ducking and dodging and diving required against the comp that Copenhagen Wolves has got together already. Yeah, but he'll get through the laning phase pretty much unscathed because there's so many threats out. You know, the strong individual AD carries are out. Draven and Kalista. Sivir's out too. So you're the hyper carry. Caitlyn's open, but Jinx does fine against the Caitlyn, especially when she's paired with a melee support. You know, Caitlyn doesn't have a big range advantage eventually over Jinx because if she levels rockets, you know, that'll match out eventually. And melee support is not enough to punish you. And even if H2K 
choose to lane swap, they will just tear down through these towers quickly as well. So I like the Jinx pickup because it gets opened up to the triple AD carry bans. Yes, you'll have to be careful, but I mean, Kasing peels well, Ryu peels well. But what is Ryu gonna go for eventually? Will we see a repeat Lulu like he did last time. We'll, we'll find out in a moment or two. You can imagine the amount of peel they've got from the other positions. It wouldn't be too surprising. Ryu's Lulu last week ended up playing almost like an assassin. He ended 8, 2, and 11. Yeah, because he got that quarter kill in mid lane exactly. and then walked in the tower and started taunting with 80, his staff. 86% kill participation last week. I mean, fantastic performance. In my opinion, the best Lulu of the split. I think he wants to LeBlanc, but he's not quite sure if it's going to work. It's tricky to play into like Alistar and Ryze because one snare on your slow W gets you punished. So they're going back to a protected Jinx comp. This, this in the later stages, week six, seven of Spring Split, these got played a lot. A lot of these protected Jinx comps. And these, these are actually what H2K wants to do. Get slow and steady through the laning phase, group up for objectives, get the Jinx rolling eventually. However, they're facing an enormous late game threat on the Copenhagen Wolves. Rise, Jace, and Caitlyn all scaled tremendously well into the late game. I'm so scared of Soaring getting ahead. If he gets those Jace accelerated power blasts down, gonna put the hurting onto H2K. This 5.11, he has been tweaked. We'll touch on Jace in game, but H2K is all about getting Hyun in ahead and keeping him ahead. Yeah, but they can still shut down Youngbuck on the top lane too with the new Nar. If he gets rolling, we saw last game, no. Nar traditionally was like this, you know, tanky member that just built armor and built a lot of HP and just became unkillable. But right now with the addition of the new Black Cleaver, we see a lot of damage potential coming out as well. If he gets the lead on Youngbuck and gets the, the camp from, from the side on the top lane, he can definitely snowball too and yet again became that triple threat with the utility from Ryu in the mid lane that we highlighted in the pregame. But finally, <laughs> a good draft by the Copenhagen Wolves and we've been waiting for this. Yeah. They did say, we heard that it was, of course, getting the coach back on stage is going to help out. We'll see if it's going to have any impact on their in-game decision-making. They are running Jace, they are running Echo, they are running Rise. All of these things are going to require a little bit more setup and slightly smarter positioning. Hashtag CW win, hashtag H2K win. Will CW pick up their third win of the split or will H2K go six and one? Now, I wonder where Arax is going to put his priority because I think that will decide a lot in this game. Because obviously the number one priority for HTK is to get that Jinx ahead. Get her rolling. We know where the crowd's allegiance is like, Crepo. It's a we know weird where... way to spell Crepo, but... <laughs> we know where the focus lies for both of these respective teams. My eyes are definitely going to be on Lulex's rec site. Again, he's won all of the games that he's played. Memory serves, this is the fourth time in seven games. Slightly lower kill participation, but a much improved KDA. Yeah. Now, I would want to see normal lanes with Lulek starting on the weak side, so he can go for the gank later. Oh, hang on. He's with an early... Oh, the hook! The death sentence connects! Kasing Kaching! He's got the flash, he's got the heal. Can he get the first blood? Boomerang Still Blade flashes. doesn't connect. Hyanu with the rocket. Flash forward. One more! Ooh. It's secured by Erdawamne. And Hyanu with a greedy flash doesn't secure. Oh. He gets knocked into Katawa. Kasing gets another one. Hyanu's going to get an assist. Just the one. And H2K are already in the lead. All right, that was a little funny. Not gonna lie. But fantastic hook by Kasim. Predicts a flash almost, because I think he started casting that hook right as the flash came out. Beautiful follow-up. Copenhagen Wolves get a little lucky that they get Hyarin's flash for free at the end of it. But Odo Omni, this is big. He picks up first blood, gets some gold. If he can shop, he can get item advantage on the rise, but yeah. I like the swap. Keep the rise down early. Nar with an advantage already. Experience advantage, you know can keep his own H2K initiating a swap and starting on their weak side, and this is good for them. They, go, they want to shut down Youngbuck right now, because he doesn't double jungle all that well. Nar double jungles a lot better. And we'll see how they decide to handle themselves. I touched on first bloods last game, Crepo. H2K, six first bloods in seven games. And then Unlimited was forced to start W as well. <laughs> like, no! Don't do that, Bob! And we've also got a highlight. That's Oda Wamne's third first blood picked up. You know, it's something that we keep looking at for H2K. Um, we've always talked about how good they are between 10 and 20 minutes. 
but you never really realize how good they are in the laning phase. They actually hold. Oh, he's caught. He wanted the wolf. Again. He didn't want Aerox. He wanted that juicy, juicy wolf, but Aerox throws himself into the, into the hook. He knows Kasing <laughs> is alone. Knows Ignite is down, so he's good. Well, we're just to get away and skate, but I wanted to just highlight really quickly. First blood there, four to one. There, we said that already. Three out of their seven games, and just to finish up the point, at ten minutes. H2K have the highest average gold lead at 800 gold. So in the summer split, they're actually getting ahead in, during the first 10 minutes better than anybody else. And it's not something I personally feel or expected when we took a look at the numbers. Yeah, and they're just oh so consistent. Because everybody was always, yeah, Fnatic, yeah, Origin. But right now, H2K is up there. And with this victory deck, I think you can even jump over Origin to second place. Trail Fnatic by one loss only. And yeah, this matchup in the mid lane, not too much is gonna happen here, you know, Pokey, sustain, lane push. Sora wants to scale, Ryu wants to wave third. All, all the thing that matters is who pushes who in this matchup. But Young Buck, he's on 3 CS right now, he's level 2. He's going to the Dragon. This is what H2K wants, they're fine with sacrificing a Dragon. If they can keep Oduamna with an experience lead somehow, they want to get him ahead of Young Buck. Seems to be working out that far. H2K looks to be securing that tower in a moment or two. He did actually catch a glimpse there of Soren's Jace. He's got Flash Cleanse. I just want to highlight that rework Jace. No longer puts points into his ultimate. He gets six ranks, some of his core spells. And TLDR has a lot more damage and poke at max rank in that accelerated shock blast combo. So I want to see how good his accuracy is. Yeah, he hits bigger spikes right now. The new Jace here. But that's for later. Let's look at what's happening right now. We see a different adaptation in the lane swap. Not the traditional uh, mirrored 4v0 that we see. He's okay. Take a tower and they trade it for a dragon. I don't like this freeze from Freeze either. Like, yes, he gets ahead in experience, but I don't feel he'll capitalize on that advantage. They bounced away for Oduwamna. He's getting ahead of the rise right now already. H2K, okay. look at the gold already. Because early, I feel gold is more valuable than a dragon. Usually, what ends up happening in this mirror 4v0 is you trade one tower for one tower and a dragon, and an experience lead on the other side. But right now, trade a lot more. In his favorite. Oh, Omni, though. A little bit of miscommunication. Unlimited knocks out of one man away. Should still be able to secure the kill. Red buff plus the phase dive means Earwax. <laughs> Earwax, rather. <laughs> Manages to pick that one right. up. Flame is lame. We but do Freeze see... is alone in the bot lane. He's Freeze is getting dope. Teleport comes up from Young Buck. I think it is too late. Kasing's going to eat two tower shots. One. Freeze is down. Yonin gets out be two. of the tower range. Lulex is now tanking the turret up. Yonin's looking for more. Lulex gets away. We did see Summoner heal used. Yonin! What beautiful it's... juggle by H2K. They punish Freeze. He didn't have a splash up from the first blood. We go back to minute one. He died. It's not minute six yet. Flash is still down. Young was like, hey, I'm Young Buck, I'm helping. Teleports in, but too little, too late. And they, oh my god, this is brutal. So the average gold lead was 800 by 10 minutes. H2K are looking like they're going to get near a 3,000 gold lead at 6 minutes. They are one dragon down, which we'll talk about in a moment or two. Ryu's about to get jumped on. Parallel convergence. The batter swings, the batter hits, the batter stuns. And Unlimited's here to punish. Ryu goes down. He holds his flash, that's good. Ryu knew he was dead there the second he saw the parallel convergence pop up. We saw Svenskr do the exact same thing. There seems to be a pattern that jungle echoes do. So if you're watching, go to the race, throw down parallel convergence, wait one or two seconds, dash it over, go for the stun. Try and punish. Good move by Copenhagen Wolves, but only down 2,000 gold right well, now. Ladies and gentlemen at home, if you're playing against a jungle echo and you're a mid lane, Pay very close attention to that Wraith camp. Two games in a row, we've seen it have an impact on how effective that dive is. And it's something that we're starting to learn as we begin to see more and more echo in the LCS in the hands of these players. I love that gank path. Really, really efficient. But... Kjarnan, hyper carry, 2-0-1, comfortable 37 CS. Doesn't lose his tower, prime position. And things are looking good because the, the gold's on the right people here. H2K, the only thing you could fault them for last week was potentially Auto Omni overextending a little bit here and there. Happened again, but H2K always takes something on the other side of the map. If you punish one side, they'll punish you on the other. Kasing. You have got to be kidding me! Kasing catches Freeze! He's gonna 90 caliber net away, but they're gonna set their sights on a limit sniped! Seeking the prey! Snagging the kill! H2K with their fourth kill of the game. And this is why Kasing says, no thank you, I don't need that tier 1 support on Alistar. Get me Thresh, I will land the hooks, I will do the job. 
And yeah, we talked about the scaling from the Copenhagen Wolves, but scaling into the mid game, 3,000 gold down before 10 minutes. That's tricky, tricky, scary tricky. Scary place to be. And if Kasing keeps landing those death sentences, well, that's game over already. But X2K, they still need to press this one home. Ryu gets his hands on that blue buff. And let's also take a look at the CS between Young Buck and Odawamne. Odawamne seems to have a little bit of control. Level 6 v level 4 and 20 CS leads. Yeah, but look at Freeze. We said he was the threat for uh, Copenhagen Wolves. He was the one man that had to carry. Boots, double Dorans. Two deaths. Flashes up, but he's afraid to go close to that lane in the bottom. Mid meanwhile, in the mid lane, this is what a lot of teams usually don't do. When they're freezing and they're playing passive, they lack the wave clear in mid, but H2K foresaw this. They have wave clear, so there's no pressure in the mid lane. Oruamne has some wards. He's relatively safe in the top lane. She doesn't have too many wards, but even if he dies, he doesn't lose much because he's pushing. So there's no way for the Wolves to punish H2K right now, even if they get a pick off. Meanwhile, they're growing and growing that gold lead. Freeze, he's jungling right now. He can't even touch the CS. And once eventually that wave's in the bottom stacks up, that wave in the top stacks up, they can move to mid, see if they can pressure the Jace. So Oruamne caught between an unlimited at level three and a young bucket level five. And then you're not able to make anything from that. Yeah, they want to dive mid now. You see that accelerated shock loss coming up from Sword. It hurts already. It's Lulex. Lulex coming in. Flash very early. Respect from Sword. H2K now setting their sights on the tower. Look at Echo. He's sitting in the race. He's camp. not clearing the wave either. He's trying to poke Yarnan. Parallel Convergence comes out. Airwax is going to phase dive in. He's going to not really get the shield up. Chrono breaks back to the jungle for safety. Yarnan with the rest of H2K. Putting a lot of damage on the tower. Not gonna be able to pick it up just yet. I really feel Copenhagen Wolves should prioritize wave clear over poke here. It was about 60% of that tower. Good opening from Airwax, but this time H2K learned. Very good adaptive team. They don't usually fall for the same trick twice. Uh, Convergence comes out and Rio just sights it right outside of it. Doesn't get stunned and then tries to get out. Well, we'll see how well they handle themselves. Airwax now being invaded on. Kissing holds the trigger finger. But look at the numbers. Copenhagen Wolves seem to actually have H2K around them. Yeah, but this is the weakness of a rise in the early game. If you get lane swapped upon, you delay your item so much because you're playing with less resources. You start tier and then eventually you want Catalyst. And we're 10 minutes in the game right now. Let's take stock. Tier has been bought on, on Young Buck on Rise. He has 29 CS. That's ah, slow. Scaling goes too slow because they got punished in the early game. Playing with so much scaling and beautiful map movements from H2K. Beautiful pickoffs. 3,000 gold in the lead. Beautiful game from h so far. But we said in the pregame, the one person we were looking at was Soren. We know Freeze can carry, but he's been focused heavily. Soren is a shining light for the Copenhagen Wolves. Head in CS, has a kill, has a man immune, and actually has the ability to thwart H2K pressure. He needs to keep the tower alive, though. How big is his backpack? How big is Soren's backpack? We should find out this game. Blue dashing over, Young Buck. Odo Wamne is about to go Mega Nar. It's not gonna help him. Both him and Lulex hold their flashes. Don't wanna overchase. Even Odo Wamne has learned from last week's. So. They're putting Ryu on the bot lane right now. They see. Kyaran just going to mid lane. This is what you usually do. If you're a little stuck in the mid game, you just put your mid laner on the bot lane if you can. And this allows you to put your AD carry in the mid lane. And you wonder why, you know, what is he gonna achieve? Because he's not really gonna out push a Jace. The thing is, it allows your support to play around your AD carry still, while still be in control of the map. Because now Kasin can go to the right side, to the left side. If he's stuck on the bottom lane on his own, then Kyarnan is vulnerable, he can get caught. But because Kyarnan goes mid, this opens up a, a more movement for Kasin. So he gets some more vision, prepare that dragon, and Ryu's always fine in the bot lane. He has ulti, he has whimsy, he still has flash, he can always escape. Copenhagen Wolves will have to commit more members to him, so... Good resource management from H2K here. And the one thing I do want to mention about Hyun is his item build. With that pickaxe Avarice versus the BF Sword Longsword, despite having that gold lead, still a while away from picking up that BF. Dragon has been started. H2K have position. Teleport is available for Young Buck. They're not really expecting Wolves to challenge. Awax, can he steal? Can he go spend scary? He's setting up. Ryu knows he's, he's ready with the hex. Well, Dragon oh. not going to get secured. Smite did come down though from Airwax, so he tried. Good he try. try but Young Buck's freezing the top lane right now, and this is what opening Wolves are doing. They yield the dragon to say, okay, we'll go for like a low percent chance steal. Not come into a fight. But the problem is their middle tower is low. And they're a man down here. 
Looking at a five-man siege from H2K. If this was 100%, they could have held. But now, in a dive, the tower can fall. And they get punished for the freeze on top because it was their only play. If the tower was a little higher, maybe they could have defended it with four-man underneath it. But they're trying desperately so to get their top laner back into the game. But it's costing them on the other side of the map. H2K oh. will always try to punish you. I remember talking about Copenhagen Wolves in week one. I remember you talking about them in week one, about how they froze lanes and ended up costing them objectives. Parallel Convergence not going to connect on H2K. They're going to keep pushing it. Dead centered, but it is cleansed from Soren. Super Mega Death Rocket flies wide. Doesn't matter though, because Lulex gets in with a furious bite. Queen manages to pick up another kill. H2K steal the blue buff as well. Yeah, and because the lane is not pushed out in the top lane, it opens up a very easy transition from mid lane into the blue buff area. Ward it up now because Freeze is on the bottom. H2K find a way to use their numbers advantage to capitalize on it. And they get more gold and pressure and buffs from those map movements than they lose on the frozen lane on the top lane. And this is why Freezing, you see less and less in the current metagame because teams have gotten better at punishing it and getting advantages somewhere else on the map. Usually, back in Season 2, teams would freeze a wave and you would see the AD carry posture there and be like, guys, can't touch my creeps. Guys, help me. <laughs> then eventually you saw the likes of SK, so they're like, oh, you're freezing bot lane, I'll just move middle lane, I'll take your tower. You deny me two waves, I deny you a tower. Your move. Game has evolved past that stage and H2K definitely in control. We see Oda Wamna now, I want to highlight his Gnar play, because I distinctly remember the last time he played Gnar, he went for that Black Cleaver build, was one of the first. Ended up dealing 856 damage per minute to champions, so which is damage. more than double the next highest Gnar performance. I think he's gonna go tankier this game, but Odo Wamne in summer is really showing how you can carry from that top lane. His rumble is phenomenal, it was banned out this game. And look at the vision control. A lot of these games, you to really highlight or illustrate how far a team is ahead. You shouldn't look at the gold count, but you should just ask yourself, when's the last time Copenhagen Wolves have crossed the river? When's the last time they've contested a Wraith camp, a Wolf camp, put any ward across the half-point line? And when's the last time H2K had to do anything defensively in their jungle? They're, they're making Copenhagen Wolves' jungle their own. They have more wards in there than the Copenhagen Wolves do themselves. They're constantly pushing these lanes. They're in complete control of the game. Pressing home that advantage. 15 minutes down, 5,000 gold in the lead. Kion and 2, 0, and 3. And closer and closer to that Infinity Edge. Just really good performances. Remember to really didn't like that video. Nope. But we do see yeah, Odo on there. He actually picked up that pickaxe, so can I hit his health towards that frozen mallet? Maybe we will see a Black Cleaver next. I certainly hope so. Yeah, he can, yes. But I don't think he's going to out-damage Yon in this game. Uh, at this point, he can do whatever he wants. He can... You know, pick the, the frog and then maybe approach, close his eyes, throw a dart at the item board and say, okay, I'm building this because he's such a big lead right now. <laughs> and meanwhile, Young Buck on Rise, he's still scaling. He's still working towards that Rod of Ages. Just bought the blasting one. His next base likely to go two or three minutes from now. That's going to be like an 18 or 19 minute Rod of Ages. Spikes at 29 minutes. The game might be over by then. Uh, if HDK have anything to do with it, it certainly will be. If you see... H2K just keeping the pressure on in multiple lanes. Odo Wamne has gone back top. Does not have teleport. Another 25% of its cooldown, whereas Young Buck does. But look at the support from H2K roaming up top two. And you see H2K, they're not too fussed. They don't want to overcommit on these tier two towers. As I say, that Ulex might get caught. Oh, we'll see. He's managed to make his way out with the tunnel. Odo Wamne got rooted in place. Young Buck's trying to run him down. Look at Bot though, members advantage there. They don't want to overcommit because they're fine. Whittling down chip by chip on these towers and eventually just taking the entire jungle. Denied them the wolves, denied them the race. The raptors, they're called now. Tower number four. Young Buck's gonna teleport in. Flame Chompers comes out. Zap. Zap's gonna connect. Flash! Reply Flash! Kasing has been denied for the first time this game, I feel. But opens up the catwalk out of there and then mid push, top push. You just use your teleport resource to only end up flashing out. Desperate move. Copenhagen Wolves in good punish. They lose a little more of their top tower right now. Desperate times call for desperate measures. This is going to turn into a 2v1. Ewax, his support's coming, but it's going to be, be a little bit too much, though. Up under the wall. Lulex is going to be putting the damage down, spinning and winning, but he's dashing away. Got a tunnel out to safety. Odo Wamne is burned through the Mega Nar. Does have Flash available. Boomerang goes out. Ewax forced to Chrono Break to safety. Ignite. And some more damage will pop that Hex Shield. Gonna see a rocket. 
did need Here's to flash. Here's Johnny. Is it, gonna hit? is it gonna hit? Is it gonna hit? Even if it does. Oh, yeah. Smiley face. Still I counts. expected more. Still counts. Still counts. Wow. Always disappointed, Crepo. Hey, man, I want the highlight reel. <laughs> so does Yonin. That's why he fired the shot. VI again. Pressuring on all fronts. And this, this reminds me of what SK was trying to do earlier, you know? Pressure on all fronts. If the enemy commits to, to punish you in one, you just back off and you start pushing on the other. Split push to its finest here. Mitch 2K. They don't care that the towers are falling slow because they're continuously denying resources, continu continuously putting deep vision. They're in full control of the game and they have full information. And H2K is a team that plays well with information. They usually don't get caught out if they see the enemy coming. And they make calculated moves on them. It's showing why they're currently second place in the LCS. They win this game. They will go 6-1. and one. And it's going to set them up with a match against Fnatic to challenge for first. And I want to quickly quote what Lulik said yeah. right at the top of the show. At the end of that Fnatic vs. Origin hype video. They still have to face H2K. Correct. Great Lulik's impersonation. As yeah. with the help I of Yonder Kasing, they get their second dragon. I love Lulix as a personality. It's a bit of a trolley approach. But if you get to know him well, he's, he's a really funny guy. So I really hope to see more of him in these interviews. Because he's always in the shadow. He didn't have the, the most seller performances in spring, but he does what is needed from his team. Shadows his lanes, puts them ahead. He's like a rain over light, to an extent. <laughs> rain over light. Wow, for the time being, 2-0-2. He's helping H2K hold this lead. We're getting closer to 20 minutes. That gold lead and that control that we come to expect from H2K is definitely in play. And they and can just keep doing this for the next four or five one, minutes. One, three, one, three, one, non-stop. And then take down a dragon. Because they're always, every time they back off, they leave the wolves in darkness. Look at how the wolves have to fight for vision control around their red buff, you know, around their 2-2 two -two towers. Eventually, they peel off, take a dragon. Eventually, later, they peel off, take a baron. Then they start taking down these towers. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady eventually takes the base. I feel like the wolves cannot handle the amount of pressure that's being applied. Eventually, that top tower falls. That's the fourth tower. Copenhagen wolves yet to apply pressure on the H2K outer ring. It's so frustrating to play against this style because you're constantly fighting for small advantages on your side of the map. I've played against teams that are really adept at split push in it. Ah, you, you just get punished for, for being behind in the early game. You can't knock Kjarn out of that lantern. Every time you move a couple of your people to one lane, just back off, go in on the other one. Our fouls. They're never alone. Every time we see them putting pressure, there's always somebody else filtering into the lane from the jungle. Because of the deep vision, it allows them to rotate in very efficient paths. They can almost get between towers quicker than the Copenhagen Wolves can. Because they have to be afraid of entering their own jungle. So they have to take the safe path, go by their base, try and predict where HTK is going. And then eventually the hook connects. Predict the hook and once more kissing. Oh, look at that poke though. Last Whisper Brutalizer, when the Shock Blast hits, if however... The game was even, there you go. it would have been big, but... That's what, one Shock Blast in... Six minutes? Ooh. Seeing with the calculations there. He held strong. I'm not sure I would have uh, If a Jason followed... Port A shot, throw the Shock Blast. It's exactly these velocity. Will I finish my base? Yes. Megana coming in. Okasengo. Will he find anything? Does land the house. Soren's gonna at least get some distance. Megan are slowly timing out. I think so. It doesn't matter though. Just want to zone them out. Get a free dragon here. The dragon's to one again. And this will facilitate what they're doing even more. 5% extra movement speed. Definitely go easy. Yeah, we never two before it spawns though, Kepo. Yeah. Mistook it for Baron. My well, bad. Talking about Baron, with the amount of control H2K have at any point, they may be able to stop playing the Baron bait game. Uh, they don't have to yet. It's too early. That's the only way they can lose this game because some weird ward hidden somewhere by Copenhagen Wolves. Jungbuck te teleports in, you know, airwax, feral conversions, face dives in. You know, suddenly you lose, you lose a couple of kills, you lose the Baron. That's the only way you really lose control of the game because if you're constantly pushing, even if you die, you you put Copenhagen Wolves in a position where they're so far away from an objective. And usually what you want is you want to get a kill and translate that into an objective. And if you push them into their base, you can lose two or three members on your team. By the time opening walls have pushed towards your tower, you've already respawned. That's why it's so hard to come back from an efficiently played 1-3-1. One, one. We see Copenhagen Wolves clearing out the vision around Baron. Lex is coming in. 
And with that Void Rush, lands a Prey Seeker, and Alex is actually looking for a fight. Teleport's not available for Oduwam there. It was used in that failing game top. previously, and Ryu's not with the team. It doesn't have to be. Dr. Megan Wolves feel like they've got a little bit of play. Because there's no hard, hard engage on the Copenhagen Wolves' side. Parallel Conversion's face type is very telegraphed if you see it, if you see Echo coming. And then obviously, Alistair Flash Pulverize combo, yes, it can connect, but... With enough vision, it's impossible for the Wolves to engage straight up. They need a flank in. Obviously, we'll never get flanked as H2K if you have this amount of vision control. See, Rio brings his ward. He's knocking on the inhibitor right now. H2K do the same thing. And even if they die right here, there's, there's no counter objective from Copenhagen Wolves. So let's see what AWACS can do. John is taking the turret Good aggro, up. actually. That's a big critical hit onto AWACS. We didn't see the shock blast connecting, though, onto John. And Tower is down to 20%. Kasing, death sentence, is not going to connect. Is coming. But he's going to follow play. through. He's going to play Saw, and the box connects as well. Unlimited, going to have to pop that unbreakable will as Lulex gets knocked backwards. Thanks yes, to the Mega Death Rocket gets one more. And Kasing connects with another death sentence. Yonan with a double kill turns onto Freeze as Ryu got his first one of the game. Oduwamne, he wants to join the kill party. Four members of the Wolves are down, and H2K set their sights at the inhibitor turrets. And eventually, they spring the trap. Ryu from the left, Oduwamne from the right. They take down everybody on Copenhagen Wolves' side, except for Aerox, maybe. And they take down the mid tower, take down the mid inhibitor. Look at the goal lead right now 12,000. Systematic destruction. Let's watch that again. Look what Kasing does. He says, all right, eventually I'm going to hit a minion, I believe. This is later. No, this is... No, he gets Airwax initially. Okay, then he plays Airwax. We're not overcommitting because we know Airwax can go back in time. Now Kasing, he's going to hit that hook on the minion. And then Soren says, okay, you missed me. Kasing says, no, I'm going to play you in box. You force your flash. Soren has to be on the defensive. And this enough zone for Yarn. He can continuously all attack in this fight. Nobody is threatening Yarn at all. And if he does, Ryu still has his ultimate. He could take down his tower, but they don't even care because Oduwamne is tanking it eventually. Good turret management right here as well. And such a calculated play by H2K. And nobody is threatening the Jinx. In a Jinx, like hyper carry composition. And then, yeah, things are looking dire. How can they? Young Buck at the moment, 40 CS down. His Rod of Ages has only got six stacks. 25 just minutes. Just a couple more minutes, guys. You know, despite the power that Soren has, you just don't see it. Copenhagen Wolves are being pulled in so many angles, in so many ways. They simply can't. Look at this. HCK, they're in the Baron Pit. They've got Super's middle. Look at the vision, though. Oh, one on Dragon. This is so safe. Yeah, look at the amount of brushes that the Wolves will have to face check to even get to the Baron. And then what? Just die. They're very reminiscent of the game they played against Gambit last week. There was just no... No comeback potential, no, no catch-up. Slowly just getting pushed in to a very weak early game. And I think a lot of praise goes to Kasing. Opening hook on Freeze, got the first one. Then Freeze finds himself alone in the bottom lane. Another straight up connected hook because Kasing timed the flash. He knew there was no flash on Freeze. Youngba comes in trying to defend. Good turret juggling, dies again. Wow. It's ever since, HGK in a big, big lead. Airwax now. Oh, gonna need a couple of ultimates <laughs> to dash back in time. Lulex takes him out. So while that was going on, we did see a tower. Oh, he's canceling the bases. He's this going is to big. cancel the bases. H2K now on the top inhibitor turret. Yarnin with a three man mega death rocket. They get him. They get Yamba eats a hook once more. Kasing. He's put on the aim bot for this battle. And he set his sights on the Nexus turret. So to one there, he's teleported in 26 and a half minutes. Unlimited pops the Unbreakable World. Kasing is getting chunked out by the Acceleration Blast, but it's not going to be enough. Unbreakable World wears out. Oh, to one there, Kasing and Lulik run him down. Kianen <laughs> gets the kill with the help of Ryu. It's not about the KDA. It's about the message. And with this victory, H2K will be holding on to second place in the summer split. They set themselves up with a match of the week battle against Fnatic next week. And what a phenomenal performance from H2K from start to finish. Karen said it. Kasim, every time if you ask him, why are you performing so well? What is What changed with H2K? Kasim, and it seems to work. Forgiven rated him. Number one carry by Hyar. It's showing. HDK comfortable building a composition around him in the Jinx. 
But at the same time, usually when you see this 180 carry, you know, hyper carry composition, all the attention goes towards that. But it doesn't, because even though Ryu plays utility, he provides what he has to do. You know, he goes to the bot lane, he split pushes, and then in the times he still in the in the mid fights, he still provides that utility. Oduwamne, he's a tank, he's the peel, but he gets so far ahead that he can build frozen mallet. Maul of Malmortius, yeah. offensive Nar, more pressure, and eventually you can't even touch the Jinx in fights because he can't deal with the protection. No black cleaver today for Odawamne, but he simply did not need it. Open Anger Wolves, some broken looks from their faces, but Prolly's a very happy man. His team performing exceptionally. The thing is, that first blood and that death sentence very early on just accelerated the game, and it's to get played around so well. I feel though, even without it, the way they were moving between lanes, it just made it easier. I think yes. the crucial point was just a lane swap. They managed to shut down Youngbuck. And we saw this adaptation from the Wolves where they decided to freeze the bottom lane and get freeze ahead, but same time Youngbuck, he, usually when you go 4v0, you speed up the lane swap process and eventually around 40 CS on your AD carries, the game stabilizes and your top laners match against each other. And Youngbuck can get back into the game, but the way this early lane swap played out, they got a tower on the side of H2K. Yeah, the Wolves got a dragon, but who cares? You know, you get that tower, you get that aggressive control. You know, the one they got the wave bounced, he even got ganked, he got punished. Still stayed ahead of Youngbuck the entire game. Then Freeze finds himself alone in the bottom lane. Yeah, teleport comes in too late, two kills on Kjarn, and tower goes down, and then, yeah, the game was pretty much over. You can't afford to do that against a team like H2K. No, definitely not. And such a good game. So, with Origin losing earlier today, with H2K winning, we have a very clear 1-2-3 in the standings. And number two will face number one next week in our game of the week. Uh, Fnatic vs HTK. I'm spoiling it for everyone, but I don't even care. Because that is going to be a great matchup. But it's a very different clash of styles. Fnatic may be a little more aggressive, HTK may be a little more cal calculated. We'll talk more about that a little later. We do have to get side stage for an interview with HTK's Lulex.